Nigerian tech companies are under siege. The Nigerian government is trying to drive tech companies into the ground. Welcome to Insights, the segment where we explore business insights about Nigeria. The way I started the video is probably super dramatic, but I actually believe what I'm saying, right? You know, ever since last year, tech companies have been under siege. You know, it really, uh, like, I don't know what was going on last year, but ever since last year, when the Nigerian government ran out of money and started looking at companies and seeing how they can get money from different companies, kind of shake them down a little bit, they started targeting tech startups, tech companies, because they were getting so much press. And they started looking at how can they get some of that money. Well, there's a new Nigeria startup bill that makes it very clear what they're trying to get from Nigerian tech companies, what they're trying to get from Nigerian startups. They're trying to get 1% of profit before tax. Okay, so let's jump right into this article I found on TechCrunch. The title is Elite Bill for Nigerian Startups Reveals a Theme of Licenses, Fees, Fines, and Sentences. So this was released August 17, so just yesterday. Um, this is a picture of President Bahari. Um, this is the person who wrote this amazing article. For a while, there have been talks about revamping the outdated 2007 Act of Nigeria's Information um, and Technology Body, the National Information Technology Development Agency, NITDA. The bill, which established NITDA as the agency to oversee Nigeria's technological transformation is quite outdated. Okay, you know, Nigeria has become Africa's most attractive destination for venture capital. It's home to two unicorns, Flutterwave and Jumia, and billion dollar fintech company Interswitch. So to keep up with the pace of innovation, NITDA tasked itself to review laws and make them more beneficial for startups. This is so important. More beneficial for what? Startups. Yesterday, we might have caught a glimpse of what amended bill looked like, and details are rather concerning, and they're not friendly towards startups. So remember, they started this to make it more beneficial for Nigerian startups. Cool. So, in summary, the bill states NITDA wants tech companies operating in Nigeria to get a license, pay pre-tax, huh, pre-tax, profit levies and sanctions whoever, person or company, operates contrary to the new act's provisions. In 2019, the World Bank ranked Nigeria 131 out of 190 countries in its Doing Business Index, which measures the ease of doing business so pretty much this is saying that this is very hard to do business in Nigeria, which if you've watched my channel for some time, I've talked about how difficult it is to do business in this country. I'm going to skip ahead. Sorry. Okay. So here it is. We witnessed how the operations of motorcycle hailing companies in Lagos were halted indefinitely in early 2020, forcing them to switch business models to survive, which is true. They switched business models and moved into secondary cities as well in Nigeria, and they're doing quite well. But in March of this year, the country's banks barred people from trading cryptocurrency. So cryptocurrency startups have not looked the same despite peer-to-peer -peer methods. Plus, he, this person left this bit out, but you know, earlier this year, and I mentioned it in my Align Your Business to Nigeria um, government before you get banned, right? So I mentioned this company that they uh, banned a lot of these Nigerian companies that were offering uh, Niger uh, Nigerian citizens the ability to trade in stock overseas, right? So they banned that. Um, even I interviewed one woman on my channel, Yanmo, who's freaking awesome. She's the co-founder of Bamboo. I interviewed her like six months ago. Anyway, and then recently the Twitter ban has affected small businesses in general, as well as how tech startups communicate with customers. So let's talk about what's in the bill. Let's skip down the section. Six of the amended B bill details the powers accrued to NITDA, some of which include the power to fix licensing authorization charges, collect fees and penalties, and issue um, notices and non-compliance with the act, right? This is what's really concerning. The agency says it reserves the right to enter premises, inspect, seize, seize what? Seize what? Okay, 
Cool. Seal, detain, and impose administrative sanctions on persons, um, erring persons and companies who contravene any provisions of the act. So let me tell you why this is horrible. They just, uh, they just gave this agency the power to, to be filled with corrupt criminals. Because what's going to happen is now we're going to see these tech companies have to bribe, have to pay, have to do all of these crazy things to get these people off their premises. That is what this is saying. They're allowing criminals to run into tech startups buildings and seize what? What are you trying to seize here? Nonsense. In section 13, NITDA proposes establishing a fund, the National Information Technology Development Fund. Wow, that's a lot of, anyway, to carry out the country's digital economy objectives. How will this fund be financed? Grants and aids, fees, accrued money under administrative payments and levies charged from tech companies. So hmm, this fund is to do what? And why do tech companies have to pay for it? So let me tell you guys this. Every, do you know the battle that tech companies are under, like under here? They're, they have to supply their own power. So they're constantly running generators. They're constantly doing all this crazy stuff to make sure their facilities have power. Then they also have to um, pay their own employees. They have to pay for a lot of the times, a lot of these tech, com tech companies in Nigeria, they're one of the first or early innovators. So they have to burn a lot of money to make a lot of mistakes because that's just what the field is. So this fund is to carry out the country's digital economy objectives, which is to do what? The bill declares tech companies making an annual turnover of um, 100 million Naira, which is $200,000, will have to pay a levy of 1% of their profit before tax. Wow. In section 20 of the leaked bill, NITDA says it will issue licenses and authorizations for tech companies regardless of their size. So if you are even a tiny temp company to these massive ones, you have to get a license. The licenses are classified into three sections, product, service provider, and platform provider. The bill provided no additional information about what these licenses entail and how startups qualify to get them. However, the agency is more concerned about stating what will happen to individuals or companies that do not pay these licenses, do not get these licenses, which involve payment, remember, or pay the 1% levy fee. So this is what their punishment. Any person or body corporate who uh, operates an information technology or digital economy service product or platform contrary to the provisions of this act commits an offense. Individuals found guilty by the agency will be fined not less than three, um, three million naira. So let me tell you why this, this amount is so just ridiculously high. You know, if I committed um, some fraud crimes, let's say I turned into a Yahoo woman out here, right? You know, um, I've been reading court cases just because I'm a lawyer and I just, I don't know, I think it's fun. So I've been reading court cases of these, um, these Yahoo boys that they're catching or whatever, and they pay, their fees are typically one million Naira fee. So why are tech companies at three million Naira? I just want you guys to understand how crazy this is that a Yahoo person who is stealing hundreds of thousands of dollars from around the world is being charged less as a fine to courts than a tech person trying to run their business appropriately. So just letting you know. So you're going to, so let me read this again because I, uh, my brain scattered a little bit. Individuals found guilty. So let's say you don't pay the fines, you're not registered, whatever you're gonna be charged 3 million Naira or $6,000 or placed in custody for a year or more. The bill states NITDA can also decide to charge a person both fine and imprisonment. Wow, wow, brilliant. On the other hand, a fine not less than 30 million Naira, which is $60,000, will be charged against corporate bodies. The principal officers of the companies may also serve a prison sentence for two years or more. Wow, just because you didn't pay a fine, wow, okay. Well. And individuals or corporates that deny personnel from the agency to carry out duties under the act will be fined not less than 3 million Naira, which is $6,000, and 30 million Naira, which is 60,000, so. 
let's say, um, I think this, this goes to, let's say that you prevent them from seizing your computers. I mean, what else is a tech company? You prevent them from entering your premises and seizing your computers. They say that you will be fined. Again, more than a Yahoo boy. Further offenses and penalties are mentioned later in the bill. For instance, any company which falls into the category of paying levies and does not pay after two months will be liable to a fine of 0.5% of the total amount to be paid every day after default. TechCrunch reached out to the agency for comments, but didn't receive any response. Of course, they're not going to receive response. Startup bill versus NITDA Act. The NITDA's late amended bill is coming when the Nigerian tech ecosystem has rallied around to engage policymakers in the country to enact a startup bill. So they actually got together in May of this year, uh, May 2021, to do a startup bill. So these key uh, stakeholders, so these or multi-billion Naira um, tech companies got together and um, they they contacted legislator to to really push a, a bill, a startup bill. And the reason they came up with a startup bill is that the U.S. has one, Rwanda. Wait, who else has it? A couple other countries have it. UAE has a startup bill, and all of their startup bills actually support startups for real, like like for real. They 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 make it easier. They make their uh, environment a little bit more attractive. The startup bill is geared towards creating an enabling environment for tech startups through co-created regulation with the Nigerian government. So these, <laughs> a pretty much this NITDA Act has backstabbed all of these people that rallied around to work with government. Do you understand what I'm saying? They backstabbed them. What was the point? Nonsense. This month, the first draft will be made public through first reading in the country's National Assembly in October. So it was really leaked quite early. Right now, uncertainty hovers around the stakeholders' next steps. When, you know, when they saw the, the revised bill. This, this agency that was supposed to support Nigerians, startups, has literally stabbed Nigerian startups in the back. Okay, oh. Interesting. This is a huge level. This is a whole new threat. It is head and shoulders above what tech companies have faced in recent memory. If passed, it will alter how they operate and drastically affect the ease of doing business. So remember, we were ranked 131 out of 190. So I don't even know how um, we would drop. I don't even know. Many have called for startup leaders and tech companies to lobby the legislators around passing bills to law. Why? They tried. They tried in May 2021. And look at the bill they created. Why? Why lobby around them for that? What? It's dead end. Okay, yes, yeah, so, so, so. However, the general sentiment is that lobbying is a dead end for now. Yeah, yeah, it is. It's a dead end. Pointless. Until a new administration comes in. For real. Pointless. And then they said, you know, the motorcycle hailing companies did try. That's actually true. They actually tried heavy. They tried to lobby heavy, but it still result ended in a ban. Flutterwave, co-founder of uh, um, Andela and Flutterwave, also thinks lobbying may make for a futile effort. In a tweet, Nigerian legislators are not lobbyable, and startups should prepare for the worst while hoping for the best. That's absolutely true. That's what I do. He also offered advice to Nigerian startups to start building for a global audience and incorporate their companies outside of the country if necessary. And that is true. Life. When you are wanting to invest in Nigeria, you need to look at the regulations that are happening in the field that you want to enter, the sector you want to enter, um, and look at the trend, right? So I'm telling you, if you guys want to enter the media sphere, for example, I'm looking at the trend and I've registered my business in Nigeria and then I went ahead and registered my business in the US because I can see there's a law coming down the pipeline that is going to negatively affect me in 2022. I am telling you, I'm aware of this law. I've been paying attention and it's just getting worse. They're adding more and more language to this media law that I'm just like, okay, like, Operate right now under your Nigerian company, but if that law or when that law, not if, when that law goes into effect, you need to operate under your American company in Nigeria. So I feel like this country has really taught me to like pay attention to 
the laws that are coming down the pipeline. So yeah, so again, thank you so much for watching with me. Please make sure to like and subscribe and comment below. How do you feel that tech companies are gonna handle this law? Comment below, let me know.